Okay, picking up where we left off, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and try to figure out a color scheme. Um, it's kind of nice to start off with a color scheme and know what you're going to be using so that as you keep developing your page, you just have colors to pick from and you don't have to sort of guess and have this weirdly haphazard page that's full of colors that don't necessarily make sense. So, so I'm going to show you this website uh, that's called paletton.com. It's P-A-L-E-T-T-O-N.com. And what's nice about this is, that especially if you don't know a whole lot about color, because it is actually quite complex, um, it, it sort of teaches you while you're investigating uh, about some different kinds of color schemes. So for instance, it'll start off in monochromatic. So it'll pick one color um, with all of these different options of black and white added, okay? Um, then if you click over here next, you see that this is uh, called adjacent colors. It's three colors. Um, and adjacent colors means that the, the colors are literally adjacent to one another on the color wheel. Um, there's another one. It's called a triad. It's three colors, and you can see that it's a little different in that uh, they're not literally adjacent to each other. They're sort of across the color wheel from each other and separated. All right, and then there's tetrad, which is four colors. And with a tetrad, typically what you're going to have is uh, colors that are opposite each other, the color wheel, at least two of the colors will be opposite and the other two will be opposite typically. And Colors, by the way, that are opposite each other on the color wheel, um, those are referred to as complementary. So a tetrad is typically two sets of complementary colors, although you can tweak it and adjust it. And then over here, you've got this, uh, you have this freestyle, which allows you to individually um, tweak some stuff, like once you get a color scheme that you like. And the other thing too is if you were to go through these first three, you can add complementary. So if you wanted a complementary color scheme, you could click this little thing and what it does is it'll add something that's directly across this uh, color wheel from it, the other color. And just know that you should actually generally not use red and green as a complement uh, system in web because red and green are going to trigger um, actually not trigger, they're not going to trigger anything for people who have a specific kind of color blindness, the most common type of color blindness, uh, where they can't distinguish between red and green. So anyway, I'm going to start off with a tetrad. And then I'm going to show you how to make some adjustments here. And then later, I'll show you how to, to do some other stuff over here as well. Okay, whenever you start messing around with this, the top left corner over here, that's your base color. And anything you change will be based off the base color. And you can tell it's the base color because you can see in the center that it's based off of this red hue, right, which is here. And um, the thing is, it, let's say that you really like a specific color and you want to use that specific color, you can actually go into the base color and you can change it here with either a hexadecimal value or you could click here and change the base number. Let's say I wanted it to be based off of blue and I could say apply as base color and now you see the base color moves up to the top left and the center of it changes. So you could either kind of play with it like that and move stuff around. You can see how it how that works and then I could move this separate section around like that. You can also uh, use either Pixlr or Photoshop if you want to find your base color um, so that you can pick something that you know that you like. So let's just, I'm going to jump over here to Pixlr really quickly. And all I did was create a new document when I first came into it. And uh, it's the Pixlr editor. So if you go to pixel, Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R dot com slash editor, then it'll take you here. And what you can do is go down here and click on the color and you can go ahead and, you know, choose from the outside color ring, like what your hue is. So I want to say maybe somewhere in this ballpark and then uh, you can grab it and, and pull it to see what kind of value you want, whether it's a dark value, the lightest value, or if you want it to be like sort of the purest hue, right? And I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm, I think I might be kind of happy with it in somewhere in here with this, this blue color. And what it does is it'll give you some different value options if you were to click them, but I'm just gonna select this uh, hexadecimal number. I'm gonna copy it into my clipboard, okay? And I'm gonna jump back over here to Palatin. And if I want to make my base color that, I can just click on 
the base color and I can paste that hexadecimal number in say okay and then it updates it okay and then what it also did because that base number was already pretty light it moved all of these um, gradations out to the outermost uh, edge of the color wheel so that I end up getting a pure hue and if I let's say that I want the darkest of the dark to sort of be like a navy color what I can do is grab this inner piece right here and I can drag it over so that I get like a really dark navy as part of the color all right so that's another option and let's say that I wanted this uh, bright red to be a little bit oranger not as orange as this but maybe a little bit oranger what I can do there are two different ways I could do this I could either grab this orange and I could drag it over and you'll notice that it changes the distance right so I could drag it and kind of take it to where it's a you know, maybe a good a good orange color that would work for me, sort of like a red orange that might work. Um, but also notice what it did is it also moved the green and this is sort of a mintier green than it was before. So if I were to take it back over, I think the distance was around a 147. Uh, so you can look at these values if you want to take something back. By the way, control or command Z to undo doesn't work in this screen. If I wanted something super saturated and I, I like the green the way that it was, one of the things that I could also do is I could um, click on this freestyle. And if I hold down, it tells me to hold down shift to move colors individually. So if I hold my shift key down and I grab this and then I move it, it will move independently, which is kind of nice. So it'll move independently. Um, that's an option as well, um, right? So that's, an, that's something that you could also do. Um, let's say I want it to go somewhere over in this range. I kind of like that red-orange color. All right, and then that way now these are no longer perfect complements. And the other thing too is if I wanted to choose my, my green color now, I could do that and I could move it in one direction or the other. Or if I just go back to Tetrad, see it jumps it it pops it right back to where it was so i didn't lose my old position all right this is sort of going to be temporary unless you uh, leave it there so if i wanted to see how it changes it what i could do is i could move this over to what i thought was a good color all right, so somewhere in that range for that orange that red orange and then if i didn't like this minty green um, the other thing too uh, that I could do is I could go into the individual for the mint green. Um, let's just do that real quick. Let's take the orange. Oops. Let's come around this way. We'll take the orange, hold down shift, and I can either, I can also sort of do it as a yellower color if I wanted to add yellow instead. And I might actually kind of like to do that, sort of this yellow orange, something like that. All right. So there are a lot of different things that you can do here. And uh, if I wanted, I could you know, maybe move these even further over. I could unlock this if I wanted to change the darkness values for other different colors, right, um, independently. But I can move this whole thing over a little bit. And you see, see, it does sort of change the blue a little, but it also is able to make some of the darker colors darker. All right. So I think that I might kind of like this uh, as a as a setup. Okay. And let me show you some different ways now that I, I have that, that I can save it. So I can go where down here where it says, um, well, first of all, I could share the palette if I wanted. That's one option, right? So you could share it like this to any of your uh, social media things, or you could also just keep this palette ID. And that opened in a new window. So what I could do that's a little bit more permanent than that is I can... Um, go down here where it says tables and export I'm going to click on that and you see it pulls up the color list which is great it gives me the hexadecimal value it also gives me an RGB number red green blue and it also gives it to me in red green blue percentages which is nice so um, you can export it like that uh, you can export it as HTML this is really nice choice also because um, if I wanted to then I could go here and I could file, hit file and then go down to save page as and I can save that if I want right into my 
let's go to the desktop into my last name first name and then into assignment two i can save it in here the other thing that i would probably want to do is create a new folder that just is called resources um oops got to spell that right there you go i'm going to save it in my resources uh, folder that's in my root directory for my project and this is really cool because it gives me all these hex values and you know it's a good place to start right um, now if I come back here I want to show you something else that's really cool if I uh, wanted to look at color swatches it'll give me the swatches like that if I look at color combinations this is really valuable it'll show you the different contrast ratios if you were to combine different colors that are in this palette color ratio is really good for ADA accessibility um, especially because uh, you want to always make sure that you have really good contrast ratio and it shows you um, the minimum contrast is two and that is for WCAG it's referred to as WCAG WCAG uh, 2.0 and that means that it's uh, these are all safe contrasts for that um, so that you would know how to work work with them and different um, we haven't gotten into this, but uh, if you're designing websites for government agencies, um, actually for pretty much anybody now, but especially for government or educational um, entities, uh, then you have to have the right contrast ratio for people who are um, low vision. Uh, so that they can easily see stuff and so it's really good because it publishes what the contrast ratio is right there so that you'll know what colors are good for like text on foreground uh, excuse me uh, foreground text is on background and stuff like that so that's how you can find that it's kind of nice okay um, yeah and then if you wanted you could see some examples of how it would maybe render out in different you know different pages it shows you some dark page design, uh, positive design, negative design. Uh, shows you some different artwork, like if you were to s have artwork on the page, it shows you how those colors could kind of go together, which is kind of cool. Um, anyway, it shows you animation. Uh, and then if you were to go to visual simulation, you could do blind color blindness, uh, and it tells you what the percentages are of people who have different kinds of color blindness, right? Uh, and so this is what it would look like for people who are colorblind. That's how you can use this. You can also continue to sort of move around and, and play around with uh, this, but that's a good place to start. Let's, uh, let's go ahead real quickly before we jump back into brackets and let's look at the palette. Let's just have that pulled up and ready to use uh, if we need it. And I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it like this. So it's kind of small, but we can still see everything. And uh, that way I'll just have it handy in case I need to refer to it. In fact, if we wanted, we could go ahead and either decide to make our background white or we could just apply something and sort of see what happens from there. Um, and we don't have to stick with it. We can always mess around with it. It's fine. So um, where it says color over here, if we wanted to grab a hex color, uh, this is actually not too far off from this pink, this really light color, um, but you know we could we could try that. Let's just copy it and let's see what happens when we jump back over into brackets. And where it says pink, we'll put a hash tag and paste that in there, and you see that it updates it, and it's sort of this peachy pink color. Okay, so if we jump back over here, I want to show you something else that you could do too. If I were to hover over this, you see that the color of it pops up. If I um, hold down the control key and click it, you see you get this option where it says quick edit and so forth. If I do quick edit, now what I could do if I want to uh, sort of adjust that color that is so it stays in the same range, you see how it's at the very top up here. So it is, um, it's it's pure hue with, with white added, or I should say, saturation removed so if I, as long as I kind of keep it in the same range and I don't start moving this color dial and I don't move it all over the place you can see that I can like lighten it up a little bit and it's still within the same color range which is kind of nice and it still works with my color scheme and it's maybe less pink it's sort of more like an off-white I might be okay with that especially sort of it goes a little bit better with the skin tone I don't know whatever and then I would just have to close this with the little X right here. 
All right, and I'm going to save it. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can pick out free fonts, Google fonts. It's really good to get your fonts straightened out before you uh, start styling all of your text.